everybody, Bill Nichols here. Let's talk Lightroom. So today I'm working on getting my new studio kind of set up, a little more basic setup um, than just being in my office upstairs. Just something nice, clean, take away from any distractions and just focus on the content. So today I wanted to talk in Lightroom about a tool that I use in Lightroom. I use it in Premiere, not as much, but I do. I use it in uh, Photoshop like crazy. It's where I first started using it. And that is my Wacom tablet. Some people will say Wacom, some people say Wacom. I say Nikon, some people say Nikon. So this is a, a Wacom Intuos 5 Touch. Um, I started out with an Intuos 2 many years ago. I had a huge one. Since then, as I've become more proficient, I have gone down and down and down and down to where I now use a small one. I'm gonna show you why this thing is indispensable. But basically what a Wacom is gonna do is to give you a lot more precision. So you use this pen. It's a touch sensitive pen that records pressure. With that, what you can get are varying levels of pressure. So if you're using an adjustment brush or, or drawing a mask or something, you can draw and actually draw a mask on instead of holding down with your finger on a mouse pad or on a mouse and going. And when you're doing that, when you're pushing on just your mouse trackpad or you're pushing on a mouse button, it's binary, right? It's on, it's off. With this, 2,048 levels of pressure, so it's varying on and off, so you can get different opacities just by pushing harder or softer. And then you can get really nice natural strokes. Where with a mouse, you're holding it down and you're just moving a mouse, and you know you don't draw like this with a big thing in your hand, right? With this, you get a nice medium that you're used to, you're drawing on a surface, and very quickly you can become proficient. And what this can do is get your hands off your keyboard, stop thinking about what's down on the keyboard in front of you, and just focus on your content and what are you going to do with it. So I thought what I would do today is I'm going to run you through the settings that I use in the Wacom configuration app, and then um, hop into Lightroom really quick and show you some quick things that I do with the Wacom tablet. Then I'm going to do a lot more uh, tutorials and everything with the Wacom as we move into Lightroom, into Photoshop, and as we just continue this series. So join me today on this, uh, my birthday edition. Today's my birthday, so that's why you see a little bit of wine on the desk. Everybody's in bed now. I'm up late recording this, and uh, so let's hop into it. Let's talk Lightroom, Wacom tablet. All right, so to get started, the Wacom tablet connects very easily. So now this one has a wireless option. To be honest, for me, the wireless never really works. The battery drains relatively quick. It has a problem connecting, and I just don't find it to be that reliable, and I don't want to have any frustration with the tools that I'm using. So for me, typically, if a tool is frustrating me, I'm just going to throw it out, and I'm going to find something else that works. The Wacom tablet itself is brilliant. The wireless kit, some people love it. I think it sucks. So I don't use it. Um, I use my Wacom in a left-hand control mode. So I'll just go through the tablet really quick. You've got a surface here. You've got your USB cord here. And then you have these various buttons and dials here. And you'll see what we do with these. Um, right now, the way that I have it set is that this is a selector switch for four different settings of this ring. I have it set on the third one, which lets me select a larger and shorter brush size, smaller brush size. So instead of hitting open and close bracket on the keyboard, which is really quick if you don't have a tablet, I can just spin around and select my brush size. Um, the second to bottom key is an option modifier for me, and that's how I can go from uh, adding a mask to subtracting a mask. And then while I am in that mask, I can make the brush size smaller or shorter. I mean, smaller or bigger. A little bit of um, wine getting to my head, I think. So let's hop into this. Uh, USB connection into the computer, Wacom tablet, small, and let's open up settings. So I'm actually just using the tablet here to draw on the screen. Get over here to system preferences. And when you first install this, you install the Wacom software and it's going to add a configuration panel into your system preferences. So that's right down here at the bottom, Wacom tablet, and you'll see that I already have Lightroom installed on here, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take Lightroom off. I'm going to delete this because I'm just going to run you through what I would do. And let's start with the tablet first. First, you have a device. So here's the device up here. It's the Intuos 5 Touch. Next, you have the functions. So you have the tools. So you have functions, touch, and grip. I don't use touch on here, really. The touch actually works really well. I just don't use it. So I use functions, which are the buttons that I showed you on the side, and then grip. You have to configure what you want with each one. So we'll click on, click on functions. And right now, applications, it's telling you what's going to happen for all of these. So this top button, if I press this top button, you'll see on the screen 
touch on, touch off. So if the touch is on, I can use my finger. Now you can see the mouse moving around. It actually works really well. I just don't use it. So turn touch off. This button here will bring up settings. So there's the settings. Let's close it. A modifier. The third button down is going to be shift. The modifier over here is going to be command. The next button down, modifier option. So you've got shift command and option assigned. And then panning and scrolling. So if you were um, having to pan and scroll like in a browser window, you could hold down that button and then drag up and down and that will pan or that will scroll across whichever way that you want. In the functions now, you can see that's the express keys. Now if we go into the touch ring, you've got auto scroll and zoom on the first, on the first light here. Then you've got rotating here. This would be a keystroke, so cycle, cycle through the layers. And then down here, brush size. So I always use the brush size when you just go to the right to make a brush larger, go to the left to make a brush smaller. And then um, if we go to wireless, oh, I don't do that. And on-screen controls, I don't mess with any of this. So that's for functions. Now that's in all applications. So what we need to do is we need to set up some settings specific to Lightroom. So I'm going to go over here. Right now you can see the background that I have Lightroom open. So I'm going to add an application and it's going to see all of my open applications. So I can say Adobe Lightroom. Okay. And now what I'm doing is I'm setting the functions within Lightroom. So when I open Lightroom, these will be the settings for the Wacom tablet. And then when I'm outside of Lightroom, it'll bump down to the next one. If I'm not an assigned application, it'll go to all other. And those will be the settings for anything else that I'm in. So right here for Lightroom, um, what, I, what I like to have on here is uh, I just go to touch ring and I make sure that my third one over here or this one right down here is the brush size and you can set these to speed as well. So if I set this to fast, then if I just move a little bit on that ring, it's gonna make a much bigger, it's gonna make a much bigger brush size. I like to be fairly accurate, so I actually bring it down one before the middle. It just makes it a little bit slower so I can get a really nice precision um, or brush size there. Okay, so that's for the functions for that left hand strip. Now we're gonna set the settings on the pen. And I've seen some people that do some crazy stuff with this, like they will set these to particular keys for rejecting or for arrows. So they will actually utilize this little toggle right here, which is just a switch. It's one position, two positions, up and down, uh, the bottom and the top. These are different functions in the pen. And they set these to like a left arrow and a right arrow so they can navigate through their pictures. They set this to a keystroke, your eraser. So running through here through the Wacom tablet settings, you have the current pressure. So if I press down, I can get an idea of when I have barely any pressure where that is. So I could say, let's make it a little more firm so that it's even more precise, but I have to push harder. If I make it soft, then just barely touching takes it all the way. It's almost like a button press on a mouse. So let's just say that that is like a button press on a mouse. So they're off, on, off, on, off. Now when I bring this up to firm, you can see the precision that you can get here. I have all that varying level of pressure. So I actually keep this right about here. I like to be a little more firm, just so I have to push a little bit harder to get more out of it. Tilt sensitivity, I leave. Tip, tip double click distance, I leave. And then double click and right click. So there's this little rocker switch here. And right now, if I click on the top, I'm gonna get a double click, tap, tap. And if I click on the bottom, I'm gonna get a right click. Very useful. Well, I just thought of a function that I do change, which I'll go back in there and change. Um, so let's add Lightroom in here. Say okay. Now our Lightroom settings for this, it's going to mirror the settings that were in all others, and I'm, I'm good with this. The eraser erases. And then the mapping for the screen. So I let this take my tablet here, and it maps this to the entire screen. So this corner becomes the top right corner, this corner becomes the bottom left corner, bottom right corner, top left corner. So it's just going to take that and expand it out. And I like using a smaller tablet because you get some speed here. So you can see as I go here, my mouse is going all the way across the screen. Where if I had a larger one, I would have to do much, much bigger, much bigger strokes, which I thought was better when I first started using Wacom tablets until I started using them a lot and then realized how tired I can get. Now, sometimes I will even map my, my area down to about a quarter of this. So it's just a box that's maybe three and a half inches by two inches. And I'm just in there just doing stuff so that I don't even have to move across this surface. So you really need to figure out that feel for yourself. <clears throat> but what you can do is you can say screen area full. So we want to use the entire screen. And then the tablet area, a proportion. So now I can go in here. And let's just say that I start right here. I can say this is all the usable tablet that I want right here. That's all. I'm not going to do that. I use the whole tablet usually. Um, so I'm just going to leave it like that. So it's going to take the full tablet, map it out to a full screen. 
Let's go back into functions really quick. And the one thing that I do change is down here where it says pan scroll, I actually change this to a keystroke. I go in here, I press the space bar, and I say okay. And what that does in Lightroom and in Photoshop is if I press the space bar um, while I'm in something, while I'm in like the move tool, that will become a hand and I can then grab the canvas and move it around. So I like that to be a, a modifier key right on here because sometimes what I'm doing is, frankly, when I'm on a plane, I have my MacBook closed. I'm using a Duet display to put Photoshop onto my um, iPad Pro and then I had just have my Wacom tablet and that's it. And I don't use anything else. I don't have a keyboard in front of me. So those keys that I want to use, um, which are mostly option and spacebar, and then open and close brackets for brush sizes. I want to make sure that they're assigned to the tablet. All right, so there we go. So that is the basics on the tablet. Now let's just hop into Lightroom. I'm going to show you a couple things really quick. Then we're going to wrap this up. Introduction to the Wacom tablet, how you can use it. And I would suggest that everybody get one. And then if you have any questions about your Wacom tablet, post them down below. Okay, so I've got a picture here of, um, this is Notre Dame in Paris. So we, uh, we were here over the summer. So what I want to do right now, I'm going to get rid of this adjustment brush. But uh, let's just zoom in on this image right in these windows here. So I'll zoom in. I'll press the space bar down here on the tablet. So you can see now I'm just pressing the bottom, the bottom key that I selected, and it's mimicking a space bar on my computer. And now I can go in here. Let's just bring this exposure up maybe. And let's bring, I haven't tried this on here, so I don't know what this is going to look like. But let's uh, draw this in. Let's see if we have auto mask set. Okay, so automatic, so it's going to select these dark areas and it's going to try and just stay in there. So let's start drawing in here. And now you can see I'm just drawing in here and I can go so much quicker than I can with a mouse because I'm just in here drawing. Just like I would be with a pen, right? So I'm just drawing like this and it's going. Let's take a look at that, see how that selection is. It actually looks really good. And now I can crank that up. But let's say that I did this. Okay, so... Um, on auto mask, what you want to keep in mind is that wherever that plus sign is, that is the color and the, the tonal area that it's selecting to determine what the rest of the selection, what the rest of the brush selects. So if I'm using auto mask, let's just go with a little bit bigger brush. I'm using auto mask and I go outside of there, right? And I come over here. Now you can see that getting lighter. So now if I look at my mask, not so good. And now I can hit the, um, let's make this brush smaller. I can hit the bottom, the second from the bottom button on my Wacom tablet. I get that subtract. And I can just come over here, remove that part of the mask. And that's it. So way quicker than grabbing with my mouse, holding down option, trying to get in there and get that right. I can just go in here and draw. So let's make, um, let's go somewhere else now. I'm going to reset this image at the end. Um, let's actually do something else. Go back over here. We'll make these houses a little bit brighter. So let's come in here. So now I'm just drawing with the Wacom tablet. Let's make this a little bit larger so it'll select more at a time. And that is it. So that quick, now I was able to go from that to that. Or let's go from that to that just by drawing with the Wacom tablet. So it's very precise. I'll show you some more in the future, but I just wanted to give you an introduction to the Wacom tablet, one of the tools that I find the most useful. It saves me literally hours whenever I'm doing edits. So if I have a photo shoot and I have thousands of images, this is going to save me multiple double digit hours in my editing and everything else because I'm not having to fiddle around with the mouse. I'm just sitting here using the Wacom tablet. It's a great tool. I hope that you guys find it useful. If you have any questions about it, um, you know, why do I use this one over others or what are the others like? I will tell you I've used some of the others. Um, there are some acceptable ones out there, but I've used Wacom tablets since the Intuos 2, I think it was, like back in, or the Intuos back in 1998 was when I first started using one, or 97. I had a great big one. It worked flawlessly then, and I just had them ever since. I've had a Cintiq. I'll tell you, I don't really like the Cintiq. I love the screen. I think the screen's great on the HD ones and on the large ones. But like your laptop, there's a little glass cover over it. So on here, my pen tip is touching this surface. I'm getting feedback right there. On a Cintiq, I'm touching the glass, but the image is below the glass. So I get this like space, and I don't really like it that much. Like I don't feel really connected to the image that way. I just feel like I'm off a little bit, like I'm not right on the image. So I prefer the Wacom here. Um, 
I know a lot of people that love the Cintiqs. Just my my preference. I don't really care for them. I now as a disclaimer, I haven't tried the newest ones, but when I did try them, I didn't really like them that much. Um, I mean, I love the the look of them, and they're great as a second monitor. But for this, the small Wacom Intuos, these used to be a lot more expensive, like ten years ago. Now they're fantastic. I want to say they're just a couple hundred bucks. Um, really great tool for you. I know that you would find it super useful. So dig in. Um, if you have one, great. If you don't have one and you're thinking about getting one, get one because I'm going to run you through a bunch of stuff and then you can ask me a bunch of questions. I'll answer them all like I always do. And uh, so that's today's video, guys. An introduction to a Wacom tablet. I'm using it in Lightroom. I'm going to show you some more stuff in the future, Lightroom to Photoshop, and just get you started there. And uh, that's it. So thanks for joining me today on my birthday episode. My birthday is actually the second, which is when I'm recording this. So when you guys watch this, it's going to be the third, whatever. But thank you very much for watching today. I really appreciate the time that you spend watching my videos and giving me feedback, giving me ideas of what to create. Stay tuned for tomorrow. I'm going to have a new Phantom video. And uh, you guys have an awesome day. You keep watching. I'll keep making videos.